All right, so we're getting ready to do something new um, starting tomorrow. And to do this new thing that we have to learn, um, you need to know how to factor pretty well. And you guys are kind of all at different levels at factoring. Some of you, when we do this, you're going to remember everything I said the first time I said it. And some of you might feel like it's the first time you're hearing it. So um, we've actually, I think, filled in this same sheet, but we're going to do it again like you haven't seen it before. Um, but the first thing that you always want to do <clears throat> whenever you're factoring is to check for the greatest common factor first. All right, then, depending on how many terms, you're going to do one of six different things. So for two terms, there's three different choices. Um, it could be the difference of squares. And the difference of squares is one of the easiest ones to do, which is means it's one of the easiest ones to forget. So when we're doing difference of squares, there's just going to be two sets of parentheses when you factor. Do you guys remember what to do for difference of squares? It's okay. You find each square root. So in this case, it's going to be A and B. And then you put one with a plus and you put one with a minus. You put like a cloud around it. That's the rule for difference of squares. All right, and then inside this box, we're going to do two examples of each of these. All right, so our first example for difference of squares is going to be x squared minus 9. All right, and then hopefully you recognize that x squared is a perfect square, <clears throat> 9 is a perfect square, and so we will find the square root of each of them. Um, so the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 9 is 3, and then you do 1 with a plus and 1 with a minus. All right. Now, they do get a little more challenging than that one, so this next one's a little bit more difficult. So for it, we have 16x to the 4th minus 25. Now hopefully you recognize that 16x to the 4th is a square, and so is 25. Now anytime your x has a power that's even, it is a perfect square. And so what do you think the square root is of 16x to the 4th? 4x squared. So the square root of 16 is 4. And then <clears throat> to find the square root of x to the 4th, you just take half, basically take half of the power. All right, we do 1 plus 1 minus, and the square root of 25 is just 5. And that's it. So it's not too terrible, especially if you know your perfect squares pretty well. Now, when we learned this the first time, we'd make a long list of perfect squares. You can do that if you want to. If that will help you. You can definitely do that. Okay, let's talk about cubes. Now, the cube formula is a lot more difficult to remember. So um, when we do the sum and difference of cubes, you're going to do a small set of parentheses and a large set of parentheses. In <laughs> inside the small set, you're going to find the cube root of each. And so that's going to be A and B. And then whatever sign was between them, you're going to bring that sign down in the small set of parentheses. Right, then in the large set, you're going to square the first one. So we're going to square A, which is A squared. Change the sign. So now we have a minus. <clears throat> and then you're going to multiply these together. So it'll be AB. Right, and the last sign is always a plus. And then you're going to square B. So B squared. So that's the rule for the sum of cubes. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to do a couple. The first one is x cubed plus 27. 
Now it's, it's good if you know that 27 is a perfect cube and you know the cube root of 27, but if you don't, <clears throat> you can look at the calculus. All right, so to get cube root, <clears throat> you're going to hit math. And then you're going to go down to number four. So number four means the cube root. All right, and then this was 27. So we just put 27 under there. And that's going to be three. All right, so if you guys remember when we did this before, we would always like go underneath <clears throat> and we would write what A is. So A is just going to be X and B is going to be 3. Now, if you can do it without writing that stuff, it's fine. But we did the cube root of both of those. All right, so we're going to do our small set and our large set. We're going to bring those over with the sign, so x plus 3. All right, then we'll square x, so x squared. <clears throat> and then change the sign to minus. And then we will multiply these together, which is going to be 3x. And then plus, and then we're going to square 3, which is 9. Now we're going to do one that's slightly more difficult. Um, so for the second one, <clears throat> we have 216x cubed plus 125y cubed. <clears throat> All right, so 216 and 125 are kind of large numbers. You might not know what their cube roots are, but that's okay because we can just use the calculator. <clears throat> All right, so remember, <clears throat> it is math and then four. All right, so the cube root <clears throat> of 216 is six. So that means that A is six X. <clears throat> And then the cube root of 125 is 5. So B is going to be 5Y. Okay, so I'm just going to use my formula. I'm going to put um, 6X in for A, and I'm going to put 5Y in for B. Now, when you square 6x, be careful that you square 6 and you square x. So that should be 36x <coughs> squared. All right, and then we have a minus. All right, when we multiply these together, we're going to multiply 6 times 5, which is 30. And then x times y is just xy. So you have to square it. Um, well, yeah, when you square this, you have to square 6 and you square x. Is that what you were saying? Yeah. All right, and then when we go to square 5y, we square 5 and we square y. And that should be your final answer. Well, um, it didn't have a Y. So on the one above it, it was just um, the 27. So you would just do that. Any other questions? <clears throat> All right. 
Let's look at the difference of cubes. Now, the difference of cubes formula is almost identical to the sum of cubes formula. Just the signs are a little bit different, the first and second signs. So I'm gonna, I basically say the same thing. So you do a small set and a big set. You bring each cube root over with the sign from the problem. <clears throat> All right, and then we square the first one, change the sign, multiply them together. The last sign is always a plus, and then square the second one. <clears throat> okay. Let's do a couple of these. So on this example, we have x cubed minus 64. Now, 64 is a tricky number because 64 is a square and 64 is a cube. And when you're doing your assignment today, it doesn't tell you what they are. You have to figure out, do I do squares or do I do cubes? Now, this one's in the cube box. But how would you know, like if it was just a random problem, how would you know to do cubes instead of squares? Because the x is cubed, right, very good. So we will find each cube root. Now the cube root of 64, does anybody know? Okay. It's four. And you can just type that in the calculator like we did with the other one. Okay, and we'll do the small set and the big set. And we'll bring those over with the sign in the problem. All right, then we'll square the first one, change the sign, multiply them together, and square the second one. And then our last example in this box is 8 minus 27x cubed. Now, it is super tempting to switch the order here. Can you switch the order and make it 27x cubed minus 8? Who can't? Because it matters. What order you subtract in matters. So even though it looks weird, we're going to leave it like this. And so a is going to be the cube root of 8, which is just 2. And then b is the cube root of 27x cubed, which is 3x. All right, so let's just bring those over. Right, then we'll square 2, which is 4. We'll change the sign. <clears throat> and multiply 2 times 3x, <coughs> which is 6x. The last sign is always a plus sign. And then we'll square 3x, which is 9x squared. All right, so those are the three different things you do if there's only two terms in your problem. All right, when there's three terms, you have two different possibilities. All right, so let's just look at this first one, the trinomials, uh, whenever a is equal to one. So the a they're talking about here is ax squared plus bx plus c. So this number that's in front of x squared is one. So it's just x squared. There's no number that you see. And if you guys remember back when we learned this, um, when it was in like this, I, I said to just to factor normally. All right, and when you factor it normally, you're looking for numbers that multiply to get C, 
which is that last number, and add to get B, which is the middle number. Now, when we learned this, we used that yellow paper I gave you that had all the factors, of numbers 1 through 100, I think. You can still use that if you want to. You can find it and use it. Um, you cannot use it on the EOC. And so I would, like, I would rather you um, use it if you're not going to even try. Um, but if you can try to start moving away from that yellow sheet, it might be a good idea. Um, some of these are going to be a little more difficult than others. So anyway, let's look at the first one. We have x squared minus 6x plus 5. This one, I do not think you would need that yellow sheet at all to try and figure it out. So whenever there's not a number in front of x squared, we're going to factor normally, which means we're going to find numbers that multiply to give us 5 and add to give us 6. But before we do that, um, I know to get x squared is x and x. What does this plus sign tell you about the signs inside your parentheses? Anybody remember? Is it there? It tells you they're the same, or it tells you they're different? It tells you they're the same. And to figure out what they are, you look at the other sign in the problem, which is a minus. So it's two minuses. Okay. So what number is multiply to get 5 and add to get 6? Three and 2 don't multiply to get 5. You got it backwards. So multiply to get 5 and add to get 6. It has to be 1 and 5. Those are the only numbers that multiply to get 5. And they do also add to get 6. So that's it. Okay, this next one is a little bit more challenging. So we have 3x squared plus 3x minus 60. Now, at the beginning of the lesson, I did say that we always need to check for a greatest common factor. I didn't talk about greatest common factor on any of the examples until this one. I probably should have, uh, but there wasn't one before this problem. What is the What number goes into all of these numbers? Three, right? So three is the greatest common factor. So we're going to factor it out. So when you do that, you put it outside of a set of parentheses. And then you're going to divide through by that three. So each term, we're dividing by three. That is something we need to just make sure we check each time. I've not been remembering to do it. Okay, now we're not going to look back at this one. When we are figuring out the numbers that go here and here, we're going to look at this one. So this is, we don't need it anymore. We're going to focus on the other one. So I do know it's x and x. This time my last sign is a minus. So what does it tell you about inside the parentheses? Different signs, good. So one's a plus and one's a minus. All right, and then I want to multiply to get the last number. Multiply to get 20. And then since signs are different, oh, I messed up. Hopefully you guys didn't, but maybe. That should not have been a 3x. When you factor 3x, we factor 3 out of 3x, that should have just been an x there. Sorry about that. All right, so we want to multiply to get 20, and then basically subtract to get 1. So what do you all think? Multiply to get 20. <laughs> what multiplies to get 20 and subtracts to give you 1? Four and five. All right, we want to get positive one. So which one of those do you guys think needs, should be positive? Five, the bigger one. And that's it.
So that's factoring normally. And then there's another way, another thing that we do when we're factoring and there's three terms and it's slide, divide, bottoms up. So this is when the number in front of x squared is not one, it's something bigger than one. All right, so on our first <laughs> example, we have 2x squared minus 3x minus 44. And we're going to start with the step that we call slide. <clears throat> in the slide step, we take the number that is in front of x squared and we slide it over to the 44 by multiplying by it. So it's not going to be in front of the x squared anymore. It's going to be multiplied by 44, which is going to give you 88. All right, then we're going to factor normally. Right. Um, because this is a minus, I do know it's going to be plus minus. Now this one that you might want to use your factor chart for, it's up to you. Um, but we want to multiply to get 88. And then since the signs are different, we want to subtract to get 3. Maybe anybody have ideas? Multiply to get 88 and subtract to get 3. When you say 88, what's one thing that pops in your head that divides eight. each? All right, 11. So 8 times 11 is 88, and 11 minus 8 is 3. So we are going to do 8 and 11. We want to get negative 3. So which one needs to be negative? The bigger one, so 11. All right, we're not done. We still have two more steps. They're easy steps, though. Okay, so now it's the divide step. Do you guys remember what you divide by? Two. Two, good. So whatever it was that you slided by, you're going to divide by it. And then the last step is bottoms up. So if it divides evenly, go ahead and divide it. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. If it doesn't, then you have to do the bottoms up, which that 2 is going to come in front of the x for that particular factor. And that's it. So a lot. I know that's a lot to remember, a lot of steps. Okay, so let's do one more of these, and then we'll do the last method. All right, so for this one, we have 3x squared minus 19x plus 28. So we'll start off, and we're going to slide the 3 over with a 28, which means we're going to multiply 28 by 3, and we're going to get 84. All right, this time we have a plus here, so that means the signs are the same, and they're going to be whatever is here, so two minuses. All right, and then we want to multiply to get 84 and subtract to get 19. There's a lot that multiplies to get 84. Not subtract to get 19, add to get 19. So multiply to get 84 and add to get 19. Did you figure it out, Gavin? Is there a way to do it on the calculator? 12 and 7. There is... You mean just like dividing numbers or some kind of trick? Trick. 
I'll just think about it. There might be. There's no way I'm staying like that. What? There's no way I'm just going to like <laughs> You're just going to pull that out of your brain? I'm smart about it. <laughs> All right, so let's divide. This time we're dividing by three. All right, and then finally, 12 divided by three is four. We're going to do bottoms up with the other three, and that's the answer. <clears throat> okay, one more. Whew, I know, I'm working y'all hard first day back. <laughs> It'll be fine. All right, so let's look at uh, whenever there's four terms. So whenever there's four, four terms, there's only one possibility. It's going to have to be grouping. And so let's go ahead and write down the example, and we'll write the steps. So for grouping, there's four terms. So something like x cubed minus 2x squared plus 6x minus 12. So four terms. All right, so what we're going to do is separate... into two groups. All right, so I usually do that with like a little dashed line. <coughs> and then factor the GCF or the greatest common factor out of each group. All right, so the first group is this right here, this x cubed minus 2x squared. What do they have in common? What do you think? They both have x, right? So we would factor out the smaller exponent, so we're going to factor out x squared. And basically, you cancel x squared out of each factor which is going to leave you with x minus 2. All right. Now, one thing to remember, another thing to remember, is that whatever sign is here, is here it has to go over here also. So this is one we are going to factor out a positive. If it had been a minus something, you would have to factor out a negative. Okay. So looking at this second group, what, what's the common factor? Six. So we're going to factor out a six. So we divide each of those by six. All right. And then this is what has to happen for this to actually work. It has to, you have to have the same thing in the parentheses on both sides. And so your final answer is going to be what you factored out in one set of parentheses and what they had in common in the other set. That's how you factor by grouping. It's all about common factor now, common factor. All right, and then this last one is going to be just a little bit more difficult. It's kind of how the examples have gone throughout this sheet. All right, so on this last one, we have x cubed plus x squared minus 9x minus 9. Okay, so we are going to separate it into two groups. Then we're going to factor a common factor out of each group. So this first group, we're going to factor out x squared. And what's it going to leave you with?
And then what do you get when you divide something by itself? 1. So it's going to be x plus 1 in parentheses. Okay, now this one does have a minus, so we do have to factor out a negative. All right, and then what number are we going to factor out? What do they have in common? 9. So we're going to factor out negative 9. Okay, and this worked out well because we have x plus 1 in both of our parentheses. So what we factored out goes in one set of parentheses, and what was left over goes in the other set. Now, this is what makes this problem a little bit harder than the others, and it's possible you might have one like this on your worksheet to work on. Um, this x squared minus 9 can be factored again. It's still the difference of squares. So sometimes they put in an extra problem inside of a problem. Okay. Yes, x plus 3 and x minus 3. Yep, just like the very first one we did. Okay, there's one more thing I want to talk about. Uh, about the, um, let me just make something up real quick. All right, so if we were doing this one and you did this, and then you went to the second group and they don't have a common factor, what would you do? You have to write something there. What would you write? Do you remember? You'd write a one. So that's probably going to happen um, on your worksheet. If there is no common factor to factor out on grouping, just put a one there. All right, okay.